on camera marketing uh, we are all slaves to our smartphones people everywhere are exploring this world through their cameras and uh, want to create content on behalf of brands because it's fun it's uh, useful and it's relevant so uh, exchange for media and snapchat together present you this uh, the seminar or uh, this webinar on the power of camera marketing so our today's session would uh, lay foundation for the importance of camera especially for brands and marketers the session will begin with a live presentation on the topic the power of augmented reality and uh, it will be followed up uh, by a panel discussion by industry leaders on the same topic so to begin the session uh, we would uh, want to invite mr dante dichico uh, dante leads international expansion and growth for snapchat advertising business is currently building snapchat partnerships with global and local brands and markets in india japan and the entire apac region and europe also uh, dante has been with snapchat for 5 years 5 plus years building snaps global accounts business overseeing the revenue strategy and partnership for the discover premium content business prior to his time at snapchat dante was working with blackrock overseeing over dollar 40 billion in global assets under management he has received his bs from standard you know stanford university sorry so uh, over to you uh, dante and uh, i hope i pronounced your name correctly so please uh, take us through this uh, interesting presentation that you have for us i will thank you so much and uh, just for the record you killed it with the pronunciation it was amazing so <laughs> thank you Um all right well hello everyone uh it's I'm thrilled to be here uh, with all of you today uh I had the pleasure of being uh with the Exchange for Media team uh at the Maddies last year in October in person in, in Mumbai uh so hopefully the next one we can all be in person uh but whatever we're going to do today so hope everyone's doing well uh and, and most importantly staying safe during these uncertain times we find ourselves in a new world still yet to be defined and amidst the many challenges we face as a society we still we all share a desire to uplift our global community and to try to make a positive impact even though we can't be together in person today we want to share with you some of the exciting things the snapchat team has been working on on june 11th we hosted our second annual snap partner summit virtually the keynote featured product announcements highlights from the snapchat community and celebrated our partners who have created incredible experiences for snapchatters worldwide and also in India. The keynote featured Snap's co-founders Evan Spiegel and Bobby Murphy as well as other members of the Snap team. We're excited to bring some of these updates for you today as well as to talk about the power of the camera. Uh as uh you guys already uh um got a little bit I'm Dante De Chico. Uh I lead international expansion for our advertising business. Over the last year, uh I've been working very closely with many of our clients and partners uh in India uh and I already miss the amazing food uh and incredible people uh that have been there and I really miss our office views uh from our office in Lower Perel uh in Mumbai and hope to be back hope to be back soon. Um little bit of uh a background on me and it's a bit intertwined with the history of the company. Um I I've been at Snapchat for uh for over 5 years. Um but even even before that, uh I went to university uh with the two co-founders of Snapchat uh Evan Spiegel and Bobby Murphy. And uh this picture right here I'm showing you uh is an image of the Blue House. This was Snapchat's original office uh in Venice Beach, California. And um Snapchat really was created at a very interesting time because uh when the founding of Snapchat was in fall of 2011, uh and Evan Spiegel and Bobby Murphy were um were uh, kind of finishing up college at that point. Um you think about the people finishing college during that year started college around the fall of 2007 fall of 2007 was when uh facebook was gaining a lot of usage uh with, with college students as well as other forms of of social media so by the time that we were all seniors we'd have this exciting social platform that we've been using for the last 4 years only to wake up and realize that every single moment whether we liked it or not uh now live permanently on the internet and it's amazing to share photos and videos with your friends um but we were kind of the unique generation where uh the generation a little bit older than us didn't have that tool when they were in college and the generation a little bit younger than us uh weren't naive enough to post their entire lives on the internet 
So my generation, along with our co-founders, were uniquely positioned to be the one where we had four years of our entire college experience up there. And then also um, with uh, the iPhones uh, and kind of smartphones in general really gaining in popularity uh, by that year, uh, the environment was ripe for a, a mobile application that allowed people to share moments with their close friends and family uh, in an ephemeral way, a way to really be yourself, live in the moment, express yourself, uh, but not, live it, not have it live forever. Because uh, you think about having a conversation with one of your best friends, uh, you would treat it differently if it was being recorded. No pun intended, because we're being recorded right now. But you get, you get what I'm saying, where uh, you're more free to be yourself if it's not. And I think that's what Snapchat really breaks down that communication barrier and allows people to, to truly be themselves uh, and experience uh, life with our friends uh, through the Snapchat camera. Here's a quote uh, that our founder Evan made in 2012. Snapchat isn't about capturing the traditional Kodak moment. It's about communicating with the full range of human emotion, not just what appears to be pretty or perfect. Uh, and couldn't have summed it up better, uh, better myself. Um, so uh, just a brief overview, kind of what we're gonna cover today uh, in this keynote um, uh, right here, and then uh, we'll, get, we'll get right into it. So our company has three main themes for, for 2020, uh, which we also outlined at the Partner Summit um, uh, last week as well. So the first one is building platforms. Uh, we're building platforms that scale and allow us to deepen our relationship with businesses beyond advertising. Now, what does that mean? That means, as I was just mentioning earlier, we built a platform for communication where you can move beyond a lackluster text of good morning to the richness of face-to-face -face communication, where you aren't broadcasting or commemorating, you're using the camera in the moment for that one person that you're talking to. We've built a platform for entertainment, where, or where you are or where in the world uh, can be a leading game that could be a show uh, or a mobile TV show uh, or a snap game uh, as we've launched our, our gaming platforms uh, very recently. And there you can see uh, a really fun example of one of the great games we've built uh, on our platform. Um, we built a platform for search, uh, visual search that is, where the camera is smart enough to know what's in front of you and give you useful and fun content that's relevant. And as you can see right here, uh, is a really cool Amazon integration uh, that we worked on uh, last year. Uh, and then we built a platform for commerce uh, where your phone can bring the retail experience right into your living room, as you can see right here uh, with these Nike shoes. Um, so the camera has really transitioned from hardware to software and Snap is leading the way uh, through this and through, through product innovation. The second of our three themes is embracing our principles. Um, we as a company need to walk the walk in places like user well-being, privacy, accessibility, and trust. These same principles apply to our business. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, being at Snap for over five years, uh, when I first started, we didn't even really have a, a new hire orientation. It was a startup. We just kind of got our laptops and go, figure it out. But the one thing that we spent a lot of thought on, even on my first day at the company, was privacy, uh, security of data, and really ensuring that our users uh, had a safe and brand safe environment uh, in the platform because of the, nature, the communication nature of our platform. Um, that has really been uh, at the DNA of our entire company up to this point, and it's something that we're, we're very proud of. Uh, and then the third is bridging the physical and the digital worlds. Um, we're investing products that bring these two worlds closer together through ubiquitous computing, enabling deeper relationships with friends and utility in the world around you, uh, which is going to be most of what we talk about today. Uh, now, next, I would like to, to share with you a video, obviously, uh, as touched upon at the very beginning, um, the world has changed quite a bit in the last few months. Um, given the, the unique visual nature and, and communication nature of our platform, um, Snapchat has been a powerful tool for our community to express themselves during this time. Uh, and there's been a lot of uh, amazing uh, people and, and content that surfaced over these last few months. So I'd like to share some uh, with you here today. It's day number 3,462 in quarantine. We are having a really hard time. Quarantine without Sylvia. Morning. I can't even imagine it. My little sister, she's an ITU nurse. I'm by myself and I can't visit my loved ones. I'm making our favorite dish. I think that this is not so positive for me. We're like, I'm feeling moody today, so let's dance. 
I'm always working, always doing something. All of a sudden, that's just... When I heard the news that another black person was killed unjustly by law enforcement, I... I felt a wave of emotions. I felt hurt, shocked, numb, angry, because I could be next. That could have been my father. That could have been my friend. We are tired. We're tired. Systematic racism is a virus in itself. And our young people are out here risking their lives on the front lines, protesting, advocating for change. Me and Trail, when I was out protesting, he was making sure I was safe. As a black person. As a young person, it is my job to demand justice. I have hope that our world won't be like this forever. We are the generation that use our voices and we are very proud of our voices. These are our lives we are protesting for. Let's keep making noise because we're making a change. And given all that's happened in the world, we truly believe that real connections are more important uh, now than ever. Um, we're currently seeing sustained communication behaviors uh, on Snap that eclipse even the individual peaks we see during major holidays uh, as more and more people are sheltering in place around the world. Uh, we've seen a sharp increase in group activities across chat, calling, and Snap games. And communication with friends has increased by over 30% in the last week of March compared to the last week of January with more than a 50% increase in some of our larger markets. So given this uncertain time, we have seen uh, our community really turn to Snapchat to express themselves and communicate how they're feeling with their friends, as you saw in that video, because we are a safe environment where, where people can really uh, you know, feel free to be themselves. And there's me with the squad, uh, squad bitmoji, uh, me referring to me and my friends. Um, and then also uh, having communication with real friends is, is fulfilling and frequent behavior. So over 60% of Snapchat's daily active users create snaps with our camera every single day. And an average of 30 app opens uh, occur on our platform um, per user per day. So I think when you think about um, what truly differentiates Snapchat's user behavior um, in terms of our core product value, it's really uh, friends creating content with our camera and then communicating it with their friends. Uh, for those of you that, that use Snapchat, you know when you open up the application, it opens directly to the camera. So quite literally, the first thing you're prompted to do is to start creating content and communicating with your friends and family. And our Snap community over the last uh, year in particular has grown a tremendous amount. Uh, we just recently announced that um, globally, we have 229 million daily active users. Um, so these are people that use the platform every single day, uh, again, on an average of 30 sessions per day, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, and again, 60% creating content every single day. So seeing tremendous scale globally. Um, one of our core pillars, um, for the, and this is going back actually to, to early 2019, um, building a local business globally. So our, our true goal is to really invest in each community that we're building our business in internationally, India being an absolute top priority and, and key strategic important um, market to the company. Uh, again, I've been fortunate enough to have been in India several times uh, over the last year and a half. Uh, and I, I can truly say that we've hired some amazing people. Um, Prasanna, who you'll, you'll meet later today, uh, is kind of one of the first people on our advertiser solutions team. We opened up a, an office in Mumbai last year. Uh, and overall, uh, our audience in India has grown over 120% year over year. So we are really seeing uh, the investments we've made to localize our business in India uh, bear fruit. Um, we've invested in local content, local augmented reality experiences, local strategic partnerships, and as you'll see later, uh, Indian brands really, really embracing and adopting uh, Snapchat across, uh, across all of our products. Um, right here is just a quick sampling of uh, some of the local publishers that we have producing content um, our application India is available in over 10 languages uh, and we expect that to, the, to continue to grow. Um, right here I'll show you a, a little brief highlight of what Discover, our premium content section, looks like. And as you can see, uh, if we were in person, I would point to the screen, but as you can see to the top right, uh, a Spotify ad that's called a, a story ad uh, that's Spotify promoting their Diwali playlist. Uh, so I'll show you me scrolling through the feed, watching a quick video on rugby, 
uh, and then going into the Spotify, uh, Spotify one. And then I go right back to my content. And I'm just in my Spotify story. Ad. Spotify, Download the music app for free. And within there, I can swipe up. And if I have Spotify downloaded on my phone, it prompts me to add the playlist. Uh, if I do not, it'll prompt me to install the app. So we see that seamless integration uh, with, with our content experiences. Um, our user base is also, uh, is also unique. So as you can see right here, this is exclusive daily reach on Snapchat uh, of our 16 plus user base. Uh, I can highlight right there, for example, YouTube. So 18%, 1-8% uh, of Snapchatters in India are not reachable on YouTube on a daily basis. 59% uh, of our Snapchat users in India are not reachable on Facebook on a daily basis. And 70%, 70 percent 70 percent of our 16 plus audience are not reachable on TikTok on a daily basis. These are significantly larger numbers than I think a lot of our, uh, our clients and partners would initially expect. And that really shows the um, unique kind of use case of Snapchat, which is creating content with a camera and sharing it with your close friends. Very different than traditional social media behaviors of more passive uh, content consumption in a feed. So we really see that, that unique user behavior uh, really driving the Snapchat audience exclusivity um, that we're seeing. Uh, and then here's some just good uh, insights for our audience uh, in India. Um, Gen Z Snapchatters in India are over 2.5 times as likely as uh, Gen Z non-Snapchatters to, so, uh, to be using social media to share details of their life and also twice as likely to be sharing photos and videos of others. So you have a, a highly engaged user base really looking to uh, stay up to date with the news, stay in touch with their friends, uh, and researching and finding products to buy. Gen Z Snapchatters in India are 65% more likely than, than Gen Z non-Snapchatters to have liked and followed a brand in the last month and almost twice as likely to have clicked on a promoted or sponsored post. So a highly engaged, uh, a, a highly engaged user base who loves brands and loves to continue to build the relationships with brands um, within our platform, within our ecosystem. All right, now let's talk about the future of the camera. And it feels like everyone today is talking about AR, but sometimes people forget that the foundation of AR experiences is the camera. The camera is the device that can enable us to layer the digital world over a physical one, one of the top three pillars of Snapchat as a company in, in 2020. And so before we get into how brands can use AR, I want to take a step back and talk about the importance of the camera. On average, 4 billion snaps are created every day on Snapchat globally. Just take a moment to let that sink in. Four billion snaps created every single day. So when we talk about 229 million daily active users, 60% of which are creating this content every day, we're seeing tremendous engagement. This has been from a very thoughtful and methodical product development over the last five plus years. Uh, and I remember we first launched Lenses, uh, which is our augmented reality experience uh, in September of 2015. Uh, and we're incredibly excited and proud to see all the great uh, usage and momentum we've had and all the great product innovations. And we're excited to talk about some of that with, with you today. Um, cameras are powerful tools capable of far more than documenting special moments. They're becoming faster and smarter, unlocking new ways to retrieve information and display content. And through augmented reality, cameras give us a way to render digital experiences in the most natural way possible directly onto the world quite literally overlaying digital experiences, digital computing experiences on the physical world. And that all equates to over 170 million Snapchatters engaged with augmented reality on a daily basis. So this is not just an experiment. This is quite literally a core use case of our entire platform. And as people have turned to video conferencing to connect with friends and family, We've seen more than 30x increase in downloads of Snap Camera. This is our desktop app, which allows people to add our entire suite of lenses to whichever video service they use. Um, so that 30x increase has been incredibly exciting. And even platforms uh, such as Zoom, what, what exactly we're using, you can do it. Uh, and if, if you'll humor me, I'll even do a, I, you know, when I do in-person presentations, I love doing live demos. 
So I'm gonna attempt a live demo right now over Zoom. So let's let's see how we uh, let's see how we do it. And I'm gonna use the snap camera right there. And, and as you can see, I got a uh, I'm kind of turning into to Bubble Boy right there. And then uh, I got some stuff coming out of my eyes right there. So this is a, a desktop app, a web app that you can add. You can download it right now and use it. And it's been an incredible way to make, uh, you know, video conferencing, work meetings, virtual meetings, uh, a little bit more interesting. Uh, this is, this is baby face me. So if my mom's watching this, uh, this is probably the version of me she'd like to see. So say hi mom right there too. So now back to our, uh, back to our regularly, regularly scheduled, uh, program. Seventy-five percent of our community engage with AR lenses um, every single day, as you can see. Um, swipe up rates um, for sponsored lenses have increased by twenty-two percent uh, during late March. So, um, as brands have continued to adopt augmented reality experiences, we've seen a tremendous amount of engagement there as well. Um, Playtime with sponsored lenses, branded lenses, has increased by eighteen percent, and sending snaps with the lenses increased thirty-seven percent during late March compared to late February. So we've seen a tremendous uptick in uh, not just um, consumer augmented reality experiences, but also uh, branded augmented reality experiences. And we'll go to some examples of that in a minute. We're also in awe of um, the great adoption we've seen from Lens Studio. So Lens Studio is another um, desktop, uh, desktop app that we've used and we've really created open source uh, developer tools. So now anyone can create an augmented reality experience from home. Um, we launched uh, for free. We launched this uh, nearly three years ago, uh, and we took the same design team that creates AR lenses uh, for hundreds of millions of Snapchatters to make it available to everybody. Uh, today, there are ten, tens of thousands of creators using Lens Studio, and they've made over one million lenses over the last three years by our community. Snapchatters are engaging with lenses made by um, our Lens Studio community um, more than ever before with top performing community lenses reaching billions of views on Snapchat. Over the past year, we introduced new capabilities to help you take your creations even farther. And as you can see right here, some of the incredible uh, engagement there, lenses made by our community via Lit Studio are up over 30%, and over 900,000 lenses have been created um, by this. Right here, we have over 130 plus certified uh, lens creative partners uh, and that list is rapidly growing. Um, we even have partners, uh, a local partner in India, um, Superfan, superfan.ai, uh, is a certified lens creative partner, and they've actually helped us create some incredibly engaging uh, branded experiences uh, on Snap through there. So seeing this um, really blossoming ecosystem uh, of building augmented reality products using these open source developer tools has been a phenomenal way uh, for Snap to really democratize the production uh, of augmented reality. And most recently, we launched a new way to make lenses right from your desktop that's even simpler. So maybe for some of those of you who aren't necessarily 3D designers, um, but still want to create cool augmented reality experience on Snapchat, we, we've launched Lens Web Builder, which is the first free self-serve AR creation tool that can enable your team to build a lens in moments and is connected right into our self-serve and buying flow. So from an ads perspective, you can target, bid, and promote your campaign to customers instantaneously. Um, over the last year, we've launched 25 new landmarkers around the world. This is essentially where we build an, an augmented reality experience around uh, an international really famous landmark. Uh, and then we've also added 3D face mesh and skeletal tracking, uh, some cool features there as well. Uh, and in terms of bringing the magic of AR there, this is um, one, of our, uh, one of my personal favorites, the Gateway of India uh, in Mumbai. Uh, this is uh, the first landmark we ever did in India. Uh, it's an incredible experience, and now brands can take part of that uh, as well. Um, now I'd like to hear from one of our computer vision engineers, Hepan, who could talk more about using the Snap camera to connect the physical and digital worlds through augmented reality, really building off of uh, the success and engagement we saw in landmarkers over last year to really take it to a whole new level of going into the next year.
Hi, Key Pan here, computer vision engineer. My team at Snap works to help make our camera smarter so it can better understand the world around us. Last year, we introduced LAM markers, which enabled the Snapchat camera to understand individual buildings and allowed lenses to interact with some of the world's greatest landmarks. Now, we've continued to evolve the technology to understand and augment larger areas, unlocking exciting new capabilities. Using various sources of data, 360-degree images and community snaps, we're able to build up a digital representation of the physical world, a point cloud representing the geometry of the surfaces around us. Combining this with 3D reconstruction, machine learning, and distributed cloud compute, we're able to map whole city blocks. Meet local lenses. Now, Snapchatters can join a persistent shared AR world built right on top of the physical one. You and your friends can step into these worlds together, collaborating creatively and experiencing a whole new dimension of AR. As our team continues to build these new worlds, we hope you enjoy experiencing the power of them. And as the camera becomes a key part of how we live our lives and where we spend our time, brands are discovering the impactful ways they can connect with their customers and develop authentic, immersive experiences to drive their business objectives through the camera. This is the power of camera marketing, the power of cutting through and building experiences, not exposures. And AR is just one part of your strategy, but it's an incredible way to increase your impact. Campaigns that add AR to their video, to their video ads increase the reach of their campaign by 31%, and we see a 2x higher ad effectiveness. And here's a great example from Holy uh, very recently. So essentially, as kind of we were, we were talking a little about earlier, um, there's really two ways to, um, for brands to engage um, users on Snapchat. It's through the camera, through augmented reality, and then it's through video, uh, through the content side of our app. You saw a really good example of Spotify running that earlier within our, within our discover section. And right now we're talking, we're talking mostly about camera. So really what, what this is saying is that um, when brands kind of leverage really two of the, you know, the big platforms within our application, the video platform and the camera platform, it, it adds a 2x multiplier on the effectiveness of those ads and really creates an incredible holistic experience um, and really adds to the consumer journey um, as they're going through um, th their experience on Snapchat on a daily basis. And Snapchatters lens AR experience behavior uh, during COVID-19. So, so very recently, kind of touched on this earlier, we've seen 18% increase in sponsored lens play time and a 22% increase in sponsored lens swipe up rates. Um, so incredible, incredible engagement there, something we're really excited about and momentum we're looking forward to, uh, to continue to build on. Now let's talk into the three C's of camera marketing. Convert, conversation, commerce, and customer. And what we've learned is that the camera is a powerful tool throughout the marketing funnel. From top of the funnel awareness to the bottom funnel of customer advocacy. And we really believe on Snapchat brands can achieve all three of these objectives all using augmented reality experiences. And now I'm gonna show you how. So first up is conversation. The future of the hashtag is visual. So I like to relate this strategy to something you are all familiar with, which is, which is the hashtag. Been around for a while, or at least in digital terms, it's been around forever. Uh, when we think about the purpose of the hashtag, it's to enable a collective conversation around a single topic. We believe the future of the hashtag is visual. The incredible thing about camera experiences is that you aren't just making content someone consumes. You're making content that someone creates with. And to demonstrate some of the power of that, uh, the, we believe that on Snapchat, the camera is the new keyboard. There's no need to type. You just point your camera and begin to explore the world around you. From solving a math problem to even seeing uh, what type of plant you like right here in your living room. You could literally use your camera on Snapchat today to learn the name, origin, and even how to take care uh, of your favorite plant through an integration with Plant Snap. Plant Snap. They've developed the ability to identify 90% of all known plants and trees and more than 600,000 types in their database. If you're like me, you don't really have a green thumb, now Snap Scan can be right at your fingertips. And next one, my personal favorite, 
dog scanner. So you can literally hold this up against uh, your favorite little furry friend and see what type of dog, uh, what type of dog breed this is, uh, or uh, to even play around and, and have a um, fun, fun time with your friends. You can even point the selfie camera and see what type of dog you most resemble. Now, to demonstrate the power of Snap's camera's ability to use AR to drive conversation, uh, I want to share a great example from the Cologne Zoo in Germany. Thinking about the topic of wildlife conservation, which is especially relevant as we're all reeling from the season finale a couple months ago of Tiger King, uh, this topic is important for a business like the Cologne Zoo to not only speak about, but create a platform for others to speak on their behalf. Let me play for you the short case study as I think it's a phenomenal example of how a business can not only join, but be an impetus to continue an important political and societal conversation. Million species face extinction. Five million years of rhino history are coming to We have to act now. Every year, more than 200 species go extinct. If we don't act, Species like the Asian elephant, Siberian tiger, and Philippine crocodile will continue to vanish until they're gone. Many people don't realize that zoos play an important role in the fight for wildlife conservation. Cologne Zoo is a modern, scientifically-led zoo. We do a lot of research and have many uh, conservation projects, but not all of the people know. We wanted to bring this issue conservation to life in a way that felt urgent and encouraged the young generation. The Cologne Zoo partnered with Snapchat to show the danger of extinction. With photo 3D technology, they created digital copies of threatened species. In the zoo, they moved the animals and placed snap codes in the empty enclosures. On Snapchat, visitors were taken to a dark future in which the animals only exist digitally. The lenses educated visitors about the threatened species and encouraged them to act. The project became national news. Across Germany, Snapchatters learned about wildlife conservation and got engaged. It shows that people do care, especially when you speak their language. I'm really proud about the Snapchat project and we hope in the future even more zoos follow. It's an example we're incredibly proud of because really using the incredible power, powerful technology of our camera and the ability to create augmented reality experiences, but to really drive a conversation forward and to, and to educate our audience. Now moving further down the funnel is the second core strategy of the camera, commerce. Product visualization and trying with AR is one of the most common use cases for the technology because of how powerful it is. The Sephora lens enabled customers to try various shades of lipstick and seamlessly move into the purchase funnel on the Sephora website, as you can see right here. This is an important time for beauty and personal care brands to think about the camera as a core part of their content strategy for their products, especially as people become more conscious of sampling products in store. And in light of this COVID environment, as everything's really moved even more digital, um, product trials through the camera, we think is an even more important, even more critical use case now than when this was, you know, this example happened a few months ago. Um, Dior is another example of a brand that not only reproduced their incredible suitcases in AR, but made them accessible from the canvas of their postcard, a much smaller and cheaper way to allow customers to try before you buy. As you can see right there, an, an AR suitcase coming out of this card uh, right there, uh, we can play around with it and then click on that button to find out more information. Lastly, Polo Ralph Lauren created a dual experience that was both utilitarian and fun, where users could see the latest fashion on the selfie cam and flip the camera to then play a game. No matter your mindset, you had an experience to engage with. The campaign was very effective at driving sales. Users exposed to both the lens and the snap ads generated a 19% uplift in sales on Ralph Lauren's website. So that really further emphasizes the point I was making earlier, where combining video and augmented reality 
uh, really does act as a force multiplier across our platform. There's a real world example right there. And then lastly, um, AR is an incredible canvas for education for your business and organization. Um, love the social cause examples, seeing Cologne Zoo, and now we have World Health Organization, another very timely one. They recently partnered with us to educate our audience with critical information on how to stay healthy during the coronavirus pandemic and how to get involved. Through a marker lens experience, we turn global currencies into a canvas for users to learn about the work the World Health Organization is doing to try to stop the spread of the virus and encourage users to tap and donate. Lastly, the customer. The future of the customer interaction is immersive and influential. We believe that brands should own the digital layer around their physical goods. In December, we work with two of the world's leading brands to make their logos scannable from the Snapchat camera. So the brands can deliver to their customers experiences and get unlocked after purchase, extending and enhancing this moment of joy. As you see right here, McDonald's and Coca-Cola on the snap camera, recognizing the Coke logo on the can, put it over there, scan it, and then it comes out an AR experience. There's the famous Coca-Cola polar bears, a uh, highlight, uh, highlight uh, every year during the holiday season. Uh, right there. I think that McDonald's and, and Coca-Cola really leaning into this approach of, of really tying the physical world to the digital world, bringing a product experience to life uh, when it's right in your face. And the last example I wanted to showcase is for FabFitFun. A brand that has successfully hit all the three C's in camera marketing. From, from helping people to share their love for the holidays through a conversation starter lens to a commerce experience that targeted potential customers to try on the latest items in the upcoming FabFitFun box, the customer advocacy campaign, where after you see the box in the mail, you could scan the box to unlock a marker lens and offer a coupon. AR isn't just one thing. It's not just for a product trend or a splashy entertainment brand. AR is a format, just like video. It can be used in the upper funnel and lower funnel. What changes the strategy is the creative application and the way you distribute and target that experience to our users. And I'm proud to say that Snapchat has an incredible team that can work with you and your brand to really ideate, understand your business objectives, and create AR experiences that can reach all of your goals. The next right here is scalable and efficient AR lens distribution. So given that, that Snap, even from a consumer perspective, ha has been building augmented reality experiences um, almost for the last five years, um, we've now created a really like, significant um, ability to target, uh, uh, to create biddable lenses, reaching frequency, uh, and actually do uh, national takeovers where for a single day or two days, every user in India could see uh, the same sponsored lens. Um, so it really depends on, uh, again, your goals. But again, plugging these AR experiences in the camera into our uh, biddable auction-based environment really allows our clients to see uh, efficiencies while also kind of pushing the limits on innovation and creativity. And then promoting content. Um, you saw that Spotify example earlier. That one you actually could swipe up um, swipe up to an app install, but also the State Farm example right here, it's a video where you could swipe up, it takes you into the camera, uh, you can actually use a lens as well. And now lastly, let's take a look at a few success stories that we've recently seen uh, in India. Earlier this year, for the launch of season two of the hit show, Four More Shots Please, Amazon Prime Video wanted to bring fans closer to the show and, and to connect with their real friends while doing so, all within a lockdown environment. The result, this, for this core idea, Snap partnered with Amazon Prime Video to build a holistic campaign, leveraging two AR experiences, a Snappable, which is a gamified AR experience, and a karaoke lens, along with Snap ads and story ads, focusing on the show's core demo of 18 plus females in India. That was Prashant, our creative strategist, and a very talented lip syncer as well. So here's uh, another great example uh, that PepsiCo did uh, last year around their swag campaign in India. 
And right here is a, is a direct quote. Snapchat allows our consumers to interact with the brand in the truest sense. It gives them a visual representation of swag, depending on the churches they make. Again, very engaging experience. Um, this is right around summer last year. Uh, and we're really thrilled about the execution uh, we had with Pepsi. Then lastly, Spotify example. As we mentioned, our, our, our certified lens creative partners uh, earlier, this was actually done with a partner, Superfan. This was actually uh, the first ever um, AR sponsored AR landmarker, not just in India, but in all of Asia uh, on Snapchat. This was Spotify taking over uh, the gateway of India in Mumbai to promote the Diwali playlist. Uh, and I'll let the video do the rest of the talking. We were very excited about that one. And, and lastly, I'll close you out on, um, this is one of our, uh, our spotlight videos uh, that originated in India, but this was actually a spotlight video um, for Snap globally as well. Um, this was through Snapchat's partnership with OnePlus uh, around Diwali last year. And really the goal was to bring Diwali to the world. And uh, given you have um, obviously a large community of Indians outside of India celebrating Diwali, um, kind of snap and one plus put our heads together to think about how can we connect them through the power of AR, through the power of the Snapchat camera uh, during this time. Uh, so I'll play this uh, for you right here. Uh, it's a fantastic testimonial and great execution. My name is Jasti. I go by Jasu. My name is Atmika. I live in Mumbai. I've known Atmika since we were younger. We did everything together. We just got very close during school. I was like practically adopted by Atmika's parents. Eating dinners with us and like, you know, part of the family. Atmika introduced me to my wife. One of my like closest friends and my biggest support system. I moved from Mumbai to London to pursue a career in uh, data analytics. Just has been part of the Diwali celebration for the last 15 years. Diwali to me is basically the festival of lights. Symbolically, it's about the triumph of good over evil, therefore light over darkness. Not having Atmika around for Diwali is actually a bummer. I know, I really miss him on Diwali to be honest. I was blown away by what Snapchat and OnePlus did on Diwali. I thought it was super cool. I've never seen something like this. And the fireworks, I was instantly brought back home. Having seen the landmark of AR at the same time with Arthika. It was exciting to kind of share this with Jasu. He was at GQ of India in Bombay, and I was at Tower Bridge. We were both looking at the landmaster, celebrating Diwali at the same time, 5,000 miles away. And with that, the future is in your hands. So thank you all so much for taking the time today. Uh, we're thrilled to share these exciting, uh, uh, these exciting updates and the three C's of camera marketing and, and a lot of things that we can do and what we're working on. Uh, and we really look forward to, uh, to working with you all and continuing to, uh, to build our augmented reality uh, and camera presence in India in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Dichiko. Uh, it was really a very, very insightful and interesting presentation. Uh, now, can we uh, have uh, our panelists uh, online? I mean, if you can switch on your uh, cameras, I would want to introduce. Uh, I think this is this is in alphabetical order. I mean, you both, all of you are, I mean, as good as it can be. So I have Mr. Ganesh, uh, Mr. Ganesh Behel, Director, Digital Marketing, Vivo. Uh, with me, uh, with us today, and uh, Mr. Behel uh, is currently leading digital marketing for Vivo India. During his earliest stints, he has been instrumental in setting up digital precedents for brands like Tech Mahindra, Samsung, and Micromax. 
He has always been persistent in evolving the digital ecosystem and unleashing new digital innovations. His commendable work in the field of digital marketing has won a lot of accolades and awards. Welcome, uh, Mr. Behel. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Our uh, next panelist is Mr. Neil Pandya, Head of Media, uh, L'Oreal, a marketing professional with extensive experience in digital and traditional media strategy with focused digital marketing and research expertise. Mr. Pandya currently uh, works with L'Oreal India, managing the media planning and buying for its large brands. In his last roles, Mr. Pandya has worked with Unilever and Vodafone, along with being the youngest media head in the country for both L'Oreal and Vodafone. He is the winner of Great Visioners Award 2019 and winner of India's Top 40 Under 40 Disruptive Minds. Glad to have both of you on the panel. Uh, now, a good panel has to be moderated by somebody you know who understands the subject very well. So we have a very good moderator with us today, Mr. Prasanna uh, Raman, Advertiser uh, Solutions Lead, Snap India. Uh, Mr. Raman is Snap's first sales hire in India as an Advertiser Solutions Lead. He has a rich experience of over 14 years in the field of digital marketing and sales. He has worked with companies such as Google, IPG, and Group M India. And his recent stint was with Facebook India as an agency partner. I'm uh, looking forward to this interesting uh, discussion. I think I should quickly switch off my mic and camera and pass it uh, on to Mr. Raman to take this forward. Thank you, Nadia. Uh, we never complain about too many cameras. We are a camera company, so we never complain about that for sure. Awesome. So great to have uh, both of you, Ganesh and Neil, uh, as a part of this discussion. I think uh, I wanted to jump right in. Uh, we just spoke about the three C's of uh, camera marketing. Dante spoke about that. Uh, just wanted to understand what was, you know, your first memory of having used camera, like any camera uh, in life. We could start with Neil. Okay. <laughs> I was listening to Dante. I mean, the three C's, what he mentioned was quite uh, relatable. Well, while I was listening to Dante, I believe, Prasanna, uh, I, I came across uh, my version of three C's, which are more relatable because I, I had a camera in my hand. And that goes as capture, connect, and uh, create. And it's more relatable to individuals and uh, brand marketers also. For individuals, capture the movement, connect with your friends on WhatsApp, online, and uh, create memories out of it. For marketers, capture the key visual, uh, connect to your target audience online, and uh, you know, create uh, stories uh, in the form of campaigns. I think that's more relatable, which I felt when I was listening to Dante. And uh, to your question about uh, when did I use camera first time, I believe uh, <laughs> it would be into my school days. I think uh, I borrowed... Uh, a uh, handset camera of Kodak with those rolls inside it and you can click only 30 pictures per roll or something like that and I was going to a trip to Goa and I bought it from my elder brother and he'd given me 100 instructions how to use in one thread if anything happens to the camera you're dead so you know while I was on my trip I most of the time I was looking at it and I have only 30 pictures to capture let me wait for the right moment and by the end of the 30 pictures I realized that you know I couldn't capture the, capture the right, uh, right ones but I left it towards the end. So while I came back and when I had to pay to, you know, uh, print those roles at the studio, my dad was like, dude, what did you do with the camera? I mean, none of the pictures are worth even for the printing version. So I think uh, we are lucky today with uh, phones having cameras, in fact, three cameras and uh, unlimited capacity. So uh, it's, it's a theory, you know, you click 10, edit two and upload one. So I think that's how we will continue living in the current times. That's my small story on how I would have used camera first. But interesting how customized in feature as one of the three C's that you came up with, considering yeah. your coffee mug says Neil on it. Okay, so Ganesh, over to you. What what has been your earliest experience of uh, you know using a uh, you know a camera in life? So uh, I'll, I'll go back to my uh, early childhood days. I still remember the first time. I, actually, my father used to do a lot of photography. So the first time he gave me that uh, the Kodak same uh, the roll camera and all, and I was trying to actually click my uh, pet. I had a pet uh, named Lucy. Uh, she was a, a, a small Pomeranian that I was trying to get the perfect shot, and I did not realize that actually I finished uh, somewhat like Re Neil. I actually finished the entire roll without actually capturing the perfect shot. So I really, when I when I think about it, and uh, actually when this uh, uh, this uh, uh, 
uh, entire uh, discussion that I was having with the uh, exchange for media team when they gave me this uh, topic. Actually, I, I just thought about it that thankfully nowadays we don't have those role cameras. Otherwise, companies like us would definitely would never have been into existence. Yeah. <laughs> and and I guess that the the three C's that Neil mentioned all about. I guess it's all about uh, how uh, digitized the uh, industry has become and how thankfully all uh, uh, digital cameras are helping the brands to actually uh, click capture and uh, uh, I guess upload. Uh, and thankfully all your uh, ten is to capture ten, then edit three and upload one. Story is actually getting easily manageable in this current scenario. Otherwise, imagine clicking thirty and only uploading three would have been a really. <laughs> I think I, the kind of uh, you know, like everybody wants to go for perfection, and therefore you know that ratio is like really skewed towards yeah. thirty yeah, yeah, totally. to one and stuff like that. Yeah. Awesome. With that background, uh, I just wanted to understand from you guys: uh, Do millennials and Gen Z audience fit in your strategy when you are, you know, planning for your respective brands? So, uh, Ganesh, why did you go first? Uh, uh, Neil, how the industry actually shapes up, uh, or now how the industry is shaped up, and I guess uh, with the current scheme of things and how the uh, market is moving. Obviously, Gen Z, millennials, everyone has got different set of product lines. And different set of uh, uh, offerings that are there for different set of audiences. So someone is obviously a little more camera. So example, if I'm taking only talking about our industry, someone is actually a little more camera centric. Someone is going about more about performance. Someone is a little more about maybe the selfie camera. So Gen Z or either you talk about millennials, everyone has got a different set of needs. So as a company and as an organization, especially. An organization which is trying to probably you can say uh, trying to become a a, a, a big uh, technological uh, leader in the market. We majorly have a big challenge of how to create a right mix of a product which can actually offer all the best offerings to the either the millennial or the Gen Z. No matter whichever to, uh, audience that we are talking to. We should be offering the right set of mix. Example: Some someone might want a different set of offerings or a different set of performance. Mm -hmm. So we need to package it well and uh, uh, offer them in the right uh, manner or in the right mix, so that it could be taken up by the right audiences. So mm -hmm. both of them, I, I would not put a, a particular, you can say a particular percentage behind it, but yes, both of them are equally important factors. Got it. What about for you, Neil? <laughs> Uh, if you define the age group of these two, huh, which is like you know the millennials, which are like uh, born after 82 up till 95, and the Gen Zs were born after 95 till 2019, and you look at the absolute number of these population is 400 million each, and that comes to like a 65 percent of the country's population. So none of the brands will uh, have not have them as part of their strategies. I believe that's the first uh, clear answer to your question. Uh, second clear answer to that is also that yeah, uh, these are the guys who are uh, if in case your brand is not talking. Targeting these people, but targeting the elderly ones. These are the guys who are influencing the elders also in the house. So somewhere or the other, you are indirectly talking to them, and uh, you need to ensure that you know. I think uh, uh, Ganesh mentioned that you know there are certain difficulties in which marketers have in order to talk to them. I think we at L'Oreal uh, have multiple brands who talk to these generations mm -hmm. a lot, and there are certain do's and don'ts which you need to take care of it. I mean, um, and, and couple of them I would like to mention here is uh, first of them is that you know don't sell. Uh, Hard sell to these guys. True. Uh, they want to learn. They 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 will be sold on experience. So it's a 25-75 strategy. 25% of your content time, do it on hard selling. 75% sell them experience. Uh, these guys are also all about videos. I mean, the imagine the YouTubers or the influencers guys are generated out of these guys. So you know, if you want to talk to them, talk to them in the right way in the right video content. Uh, you know, these guys love and brand engage with them. Don't leave them aside. I mean, reply, respond to their feedback, suggestions. There's also a study which says that, yeah, uh, end of the day, if uh, any of these generation will purchase a product if uh, uh, after review, after seeing like five to six reviews minimum. So they 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 want to engage. And lastly, I think Ganesh mentioned again was about that. Uh, these are smarter kids compared to most of the digital marketers also. So respect their privacy. <laughs> End of the day, yeah, don't don't chase them blindly by the retargeting and X Y Z. I mean, uh -huh. they they know more than most of us. So respect the privacy, respect their thing, and if you if you cater all of this thing together, you're going to win them uh, for long term. Okay, the interesting point that you left with when in this answer about you know you can't take 
them for granted. You need to, you know, up your game because they are already more often than not they know more than you. Uh, so, in these considering this kind of a scenario, uh, how do you keep your brand relevant in this changing times? Like, you know, where uh, you know the whole world is going into, you know, is expecting some kind of an immersive uh, engagement from brands. Have you ventured into augmented reality, considering the kind of uh, audience that we, uh, we that you just spoke about? Um, okay, <laughs> I mean it's a very contextual question, uh, Prasanna. I mean we are we are into a pandemic, which is all about social distancing, uh -huh. lockdown, and technology is born in these times. I mean, let's be. I read an article the other day which was titled that technology is the cupid of COVID. Uh, and I was like, I was surprised to read the article, but actually, end of the day, it's playing that role. Technology mm. is enabling all of us in somewhere or other uh, in the form to reach out to the customers. I mean, and uh, we at L'Oreal believe that uh, beauty and tech is a perfect match. Mm. I mean, beauty is all about visual beauty. Uh, it's all about socially shareable. Tech on the other side uh, is is more about smartphones as uh, Ganesh is working with another organization. And it's also about uh, smartphones with camera, which is three, four, three, in fact, three cameras these days. So uh, it's a perfect match. And we believe the future of beauty is the tech beauty. And that's where, uh, uh, you know, the we, we do a lot of, and, and in the current scenario of social distancing and lockdown, I mean, uh, virtual try-ons is picking up a lot for brands like us. I'm sure. I mean, uh, economic uh, e-commerce sales are up, uh, coming up. And if, if, if anyone in the house, if in, in anyone in your house wants to buy a lipstick shade, they want to know how it looks on them before they make the purchase on the e-commerce. So virtual try-on is playing a big role. Uh, I think that's how I believe that, you know, brands are uh, relatively... Uh, adapting to this scenario and it's the future I believe I think it's interesting interesting time for all of us got it so what's it for you uh, Ganesh in terms of uh, how in keeping your brand relevant uh, in these times like what is uh, what is what is your experience been so, uh, okay so uh, I'll take a leave from uh, what Neil said and uh, basically try to connect it back so we are a technology brand, we're just trying to be relevant in these times and uh, currently most of the decisions that we are taking and like uh, Neil also rightly mentioned, we are into a pandemic. Most of the decisions that the consumers are making actually is occurring because it's a mix of fear and convenience. People, example like examples like what Neil took and what Neil mentioned that uh, uh, maybe what lipstick shade is looking best at me. Exactly. That's majorly that I'm actually not willing to move out of my house plus I'm looking at a convenience of how it will look at me before I, because normally what's the consumer life cycle, what's the journey. I, I'm used to going to the store, looking at it and probably see how the shade looks at me and then be relevant or probably buy it. In a similar scenario, however, we as a uh, uh, we as a brand, we have a different set of challenge wherein we have to be, A, we are selling technology. Yeah. And consumer, and we are a very, very high involvement category. Around 60% of our users are actually doing our probably, like you also mentioned, watching around six to seven reviews with, before I go and make a purchase. And when I say a purchase, still uh, uh, being how the industry is, our consumers want to uh, have a look and feel of the product before I make a purchase. Because like example, like I just, I'm just taking a very basic example, like how we are talking, I flaunted my phone, Neil flaunted his phone. We are actually need to see that how the phone looks into our hands and how the experiences of the product. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have really been trying to do a lot of innovation in this uh, 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 time of pandemic. And we have not uh, put our guards down where we have not probably done something. We have launched a product also. And I guess uh, we have been partnered with the uh, partners likes. Uh, we've done some work with Snap also. And we've partnered with uh, a lot of work with Facebook. So we have uh, an AR solution on an unboxing of a product because in our category, unboxing of a product plays a lot of uh, role as to what all am I getting, how does a product look in terms of the colors, the feel, the, the camera experience and all. So what we thought was that what if uh, the consumer can't come to our stores? What, what if we can actually create a solution wherein we can actually move to their store or their houses? So we created an Instagram uh, AR solution wherein you can actually go engage with the brand, uh, uh, look at the different colors of the phone, look at what are the key USPs and why are we actually, you can actually experience them also. So even if I'm talking about the camera USB and anything, it can actually tell you what the basic uh, 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 basic need is. And <clears throat> if you are interested, we can actually connect you to the nearest store. So the intent is that we have to make the user journey uh, very, very seamless and very, very easily adaptable in this time because the consumer is very, very scared. So what we are saying is that you don't need to step out of your house. You experience the product, like the product, 
you play with the product and if you like it we will actually connect you to the nearest store and the guy will come to your place will deliver the product you will need to step up Right. So, so those are kind of things that we will have to probably, and and I guess the industry is eventually moving into that direction, wherein we will have to look at more modernized and I would say more uh, 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 consumer-led uh, solutions, because even whether it's a millennial or it's the Gen Z, they all know what they want here. Yeah. So Absolutely. we cannot at the we can't at the end of the day judge or probably one size fits all. It can't be the solution like that. so we have to create communications like like neer also mentioned have different set of video or camera maybe uh, video or uh, solutions or maybe look at how we can work with influencers and all but with all these things we have to look at that how we are trying to make that problem of the user that is there simpler or probably making a solution or giving a solution to the user correct no i think the clear theme of this discussion seems to be that uh you know you know adapting to the new normal and ensuring that be it you know be it beauty or be it for a tech oem either cases i think uh you know you know giving them a virtual try on in certain cases the use cases may be different between the two categories but there is an underlying theme of having to change and step up your game so that seems like the underlying theme of this discussion uh so with that in mind i wanted to ask you uh, probably you know neil you want to go first how do you pick relevant partners or platforms when it comes to you know scaling your business in these times uh you know as if you can talk us through some of that uh, it's a it's a very common question prasanna i get to hear when i interact with most of the platform guys uh, i mean but there is no rocket science let's be very honest mm-hmm. it will be same for what i will say and what uh, ganesh is going to answer after me it's very simple matlab uh, pani is very simple to be very honest there are four to five things which a brand guy will look into it before selecting a partner or a platform first of all what's the objective of the brand uh, brand's campaign is it awareness is it conversion is it engagement and based is the objective the weightage of platform spends will vary from one object to the another simple sure. second thing which most of us look at is that uh, is my tg uh, available on the platform in a sizable uh, portion yeah. you know yeah. 550 million internet population it's obvious that every platform will have all the tgs but mm-hmm. is the tg available on a particular platform in a sizable portion that's mm-hmm. the second thing i will look at it uh, sure. third thing is uh, you're yeah, targeting opportunities mm-hmm. i mean in the unified we all know unified measurement unified targeting is not available so the only thing what the platform is uh, you know giving opportunity to the brands in terms of sharper targeting that's the third thing with most of the brands look at it fourth thing is uh, platform's ability to adapt to brand's requirement you know sure. if the platform is really not uh, capable to bring in change technologically available then the brand will hesitate to go to that particular platform so is the platform available and capable to bring in the change and the lastly are i'm a media guy efficiency is what i need to live with and uh, cost efficiency i put it in the end and i don't when i say efficiency i really don't mean uh, cheap versus expensive it could be in the form of that which platform is generating more business to me and yeah. roi on that basis also is important Absolutely. i think these are the four five simple fundas which anyone need to answer before getting selecting a platform correct i think it's probably a, a difficult task of uh, answering the question considering neil said you know you ask anybody more or less you'll get similar answer but i'll still get a ganesh's point of view on what you think are factors that would matter to you i'm really baffled as to what to add because it's it's a, it's a perfect answer what he gave and it's like uh, what what i could have add to it is like probably in along with that in adaptability if you have creative capabilities yeah, i guess yeah, that's yeah. an added advantage yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is that, because uh, that is what uh, a lot of times what marketers have is they have the best platform but not the best uh, creative to run there or they have the best creatives but not the best platform that time they choose so that is something that i feel from a digital standpoint if we get the mix right along with the uh, right side of creative i guess it's a, it's, it's a win win for both of us got it i think i think the clear takeaway is the bedrock of the whole uh, process is do we get efficiency and efficacy uh, you know from the platform and everything else is add on like is the are they adaptable do they have creative capabilities and so on and so forth but prasanna uh, but efficiency like uh, neil also mentioned that uh, probably as a marketer when we come on board now we keep all these efficiency and everything as as the bottom line or we will not probably look at everything in terms of from an efficiency perspective yeah. example if i'm looking from if i'm just taking an example if i'm looking at an ar solution i'm looking at what my objective is what he rightly Absolutely. mentioned was what's the first point that you have to look at is what's your objective if i'm looking at an upper funnel solution i can't think of that tomorrow and look and say yaar it did not help me drive more sales it did not help me drive more conversions or maybe a footfall to the stores so if i'm looking at upper 
funnel solution so accordingly i will automatically say then you have to be very very clear on what your objective is and then you have to come back and sell tell or probably go back and evaluate that efficiency is there or not there but right. the first thing or the key metric that everybody needs to look at is a objective b is fitment these two right. things are very important for everyone awesome hey uh so can't agree more with that so just one last question i think uh, you know that i would like to ask you guys is to understand do you guys think augmented reality is mainstream already or do you think it's getting there what, what is your sense because uh in some would say it's the future and some say you know it's already here we're already experiencing what's your sense of is augmented reality is it mainstream already or not in india so uh, uh i'll uh i say uh, prasanna if so actually i laid a lot of, we have been associated with augmented reality uh, quite a lot and we have done a lot of work on augmented reality i guess over the last 6 uh, 8 uh, months we have been really doing a lot of work i remember it doing a campaign with snap also during last diwali where in actually we, we we got into engagement and and i was just while, while uh, dante was telling or uh, talking about the three c's and all i was actually looking at uh, uh, the consumer or some engagement that i could talk about so i really remember that campaign where in we actually Got uh, the sky lighting thing because we had yeah, a campaign. Yeah, 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 because we had a campaign wherein actually the consumer needs to send a sky lighting and all. Yeah, it had so, Om Jai Jagdish Shri tune playing in the yeah, background yeah, yeah. or something. So, like that. so, so the thing was that at that time I feel maybe AR is something that it's new. Maybe things are happening. But if you talk to me in today and ask me that Ganesh, uh, uh, what's your point of view on AR? I seriously feel it's there to stay. It's become mainstream and. Trust you me. I guess a lot of brands are going to move to it. Yeah, I'll be very frank in our category only. I have seen at least four brands doing the same AR solution, but in a different format. Yeah. But the intent is everybody knows that the consumer can't go out, and I guess Neil also mentioned that the consumer. So even the, even people are trying lipstick shades. So you can understand the 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 importance of how the technology is actually. Uh, what's the uh, I would say the role changing thing that the technology is playing. into this uh, entire scenario and i guess it's uh, i would not say that uh, uh, it's a good situation to be in but uh, i would definitely say that sometimes being into tough situations help us to get better marketing solutions or the Got best it. marketing solutions possible in the market got it neil uh anything you wanted to say if you remember 5 uh, to 6 years back when uh, we were in uh, group m and i was at vodafone and you know yeah. we used to talk at that point of time uh, yeah is digital the current uh, future that that situation digital is the current scenario for all of us now the question arises that is what in digital is the mainstream now and that's where ar vr comes into consideration i believe and you know i i believe if you see this industry's growth Uh, it's growing at 50 60% cagr globally and india both yeah. so it, that's where most of the brands and all of them are investing into this industry so it's the mainstream right now and to be very honest why it is mainstream it is, when you realize anything is mainstream when you start seeing it in your uh, surroundings hmm. yeah I, i went like a couple of quarters back my grandma had to do i uh, some uh, con, I, i operation or something like that and the doctor showed my grandma everything on ar vr how he's going to do the operation how stuff are going to happen so that's that's our school teachers are teaching the kids through ar and vr hmm. i mean uh, people like us are using virtual try ons into ar and vr Absolutely. i think that answers fairly that you know ar and vr has become the mainstream and it's there to grow from now and to be to be short answer to the question which is there awesome awesome uh, so that's all the questions that we had today but thank you so much for taking time and you know joining us in this discussion uh, i think the you know the one thing that we are leaving today with everyone is that ar is mainstream and it's here to stay but like both of you agreed i think it's always has to be tied back to a business objective and you know in more in most of the pla camping planning so that's what we leave you guys with and uh, nazia over to you super thank you very Cheers. much really a very very interesting uh, discussion and uh, i think this webinar and all of this is also possible because of the ar and vr and all those things that you guys have uh, thank you mr pandya thank you mr behar for joining us i uh, now uh, would uh, want mr digashu to come back and uh, take up uh, questions we have flooded with some 20 questions already and uh, if raman you can take this forward yeah, thank cool. you so much. thanks neil thanks kanish thank you thanks for having me take care awesome uh, cool so we might not have time for uh, all the questions today but uh, you know we are happy to take some of these questions between uh, you know dante and i uh, for the other questions i think we we are happy to get back to you over email um, 
firstly, I think, uh, you know, I think thanks for staying, uh, you know, you know, connecting to this uh, webinar today. And uh, um, the, one of the first questions that we have today from um, people that are attending the session today is um, in terms of, um, you know, in the current scheme of things, do you think, um, uh, you know, the, the common perception is Snapchat uh, generally has uh, audience which are under the age of 18. Is that true for India? Uh, is the question that we have, uh, you know, one of the questions that we have, I, I can take that. Uh, so that's a common perception that a lot of people think that this is only teenagers that are there on Snapchat and so on and so forth. But data shows uh, us in India that we see closer to 20% uh, of the audience, only 20% of the audience are under 18. So a large chunk of audience are still above the age of 18. And these are people that come from densely populated cities and towns. Yeah, we have younger TG, but we have, uh, you know, that's only 20% of the TG, which is um, uh, under the age of uh, 18. Uh, so that was one question. And the second one is, uh, Dante, if you can take this up, what type of ad formats does Snapchat support? Yeah, th thanks, Prasanna, and, and thank you, uh, thank you, audience, uh, for the question. Um, so essentially, as mentioned a bit earlier in the presentation, the two broad categories of ad products on Snapchat uh, are augmented reality and video. Um, augmented reality takes place within our camera platform, and video takes place either in between our friend stories or within the discovered part of the platform. Being even taken a further step back, one uh, just important thing to keep in mind from Snapchat product philosophy perspective is the same product engineering team that designs our consumer products also designs our, uh, our advertising products. So we'll never take a consumer experience and jam an advertisement within it. Um, we actually look at consumer behavior, see what parts of the app are resonating with our users the most, where we're seeing the most engagement, taking those consumer products and allowing brands to, to take part in that experience. Yeah. Uh, just to add to it, um, you know, in terms of uh, um, the ad formats that he already spoke about, we have lens and filter, uh, both are augmented reality options, which can be bought through an insertion order based buy where, you know, you can for that one day, if you take a national lens, you, you know, that would be the first lens branded lens that would appear on the lens carousel on Snapchat when somebody logs in. Uh, and similarly for filter as well, that will be the first filter that somebody sees for that day. But it's also possible for you to buy lenses through uh, auction, which is you can bid for a specific lens. But Snapchat, uh, Snap ads and story ads are ad formats that can be bought using uh, either a reach and frequency buy, which most of you would be very familiar with, because you can uh, buy audience, uh, you know, with a with a guaranteed uh, reach and also with absolutely honored frequency cap uh, and you can decide what kind of um, you know frequency distribution is working for you so reach and frequency it comes and with a frozen CPM while you book the campaign and you can also use auction buy to be able to you know bid on CPM or any other specific uh, you know bidding methodology to be able to buy snap ads and story ads so just to add to what Dante already spoke uh, about ad format specifically all right. Uh, the next question is um, why augmented reality on Snapchat when there are other platforms that are offering augmented reality as well? Dante, if you can take this. Sure. So I think um, one first thing to keep in mind as we were speaking is we've been doing, even though we're a relatively new and young platform, uh, right, Snapchat's eight years old and uh, a, lot of our, you know, a lot of other platforms are older, um, but we've been doing augmented reality in the camera the longest. I mean, I think that people are talking augment, about augmented re reality a lot now in 2020. Um, we were doing augmented reality in, in 2015. Um, so I think that we've, we just, our, our sample size, the data, like user behavior, how, what resonates with brands, what it doesn't. Um, we've had just a longer sample size and, and honestly more people focused on it. And I think with things like the advancement of Lens Studio, where we've really democratize AR production to the world. Uh, we've created tools for them to use. Um, we've learned quite a bit. I think to the specific point of when other platforms have augmented reality experiences too, and so does Snapchat, how, how is it differentiated? 
Um, I actually love using an analogy. Uh, actually, Persona, I think this is your, one of your favorite analogies that I, that I like to use. Um, uh, Starbucks and McDonald's, right? And, and think about Starbucks has coffee and they also have a sausage egg breakfast sandwich. McDonald's has coffee and they also have a sausage egg breakfast sandwich. Would you say that McDonald's and Starbucks compete directly with each other? No. They both have their own customer base, loyal customer base, and both have their own audience. When I think of getting coffee, I think of Starbucks first. So even though they have the breakfast sandwich, I don't think of that. I think of Starbucks. I think of coffee. That's their core value prop. When I think of McDonald's, I think of the breakfast sandwich first. I don't think of coffee first because the breakfast sandwich is their core value prop. So they both have the same two features, but Starbucks leads with coffee because that's their core value prop. McDonald's leads with, with the sandwich. I would say Snapchat leads with the camera and with augmented reality. Other platforms may have the same feature and you could say use it, but it's almost like McDonald's with coffee. They're not, that's not why you go to those platforms, right? Like other platforms, you go to scroll through a feed or you go to watch influencers or you go to watch uh, funny videos. And then you may use augmented reality later. Snapchat, you have 170 million people every single day using our camera. We are the biggest camera platform in the world. And I don't think in India, you have over 25 million monthly users, but they're all using the camera, right? How many other apps uh, do you have that many people using augmented reality in the mobile camera and sharing with their friends every single day? So uh, I think that's kind of really how, how we view it, where even though the same features may exist elsewhere, it's also what's the consumer behavior why do people go to it? Uh, and then that's when you even get into um, the technology innovation. Like you saw that video with, uh, with KeyPen in it and talking about just um, creating AR experiences and spaces and, and all the different things we're working on there. All right. I think uh, just to add to what Dante said, I think that goes to, uh, you know, that's the reason why how augmented reality is promoted on other platforms also is different from how it's promoted on um, Snap. Like, for example, when I, answer the earlier question I spoke about. Um, I spoke about how you can uh, make your branded lens feature in the lens carousel. Uh, lens carousel, we are able to offer advertising options within that because we are confident of number of people coming to lens carousel uh, on a regular basis because people are habituated to coming to the lens carousel or, or even use filters to be able to use those uh, enhancements uh, to the kind of content that they're creating, which is not possible in a lot of other platforms where you need to find a different way of promoting augmented reality in a roundabout way. I think that's the key difference. And I think difference is uh, the, or the user's mindset when they come to Snapchat versus other platforms as far as uh, augmented reality is concerned. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, I think that question is, how many languages does Snap support in India? Uh, I think uh, it was covered in one of those slides, but you know that slide also had uh, you know an interesting Spotify ad, so uh, uh, no wonder somebody uh, missed it. But uh, so that that's the number of languages that we support in India is ten. So uh, we started off with uh, Hindi, Urdu, uh, and then we had Marathi, Gujarati, and Punjabi, uh, and then we later on added the four prominent South Indian languages of uh, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, and Bangla as well as the 10th language. So we have uh, Snapchat is being offered in India in all these 10 uh, languages. Uh, there was a question on, uh, can we get sizing for different uh, you know, regions in India? So I just wanted to, like some of the brands would have heard from our sales partners in the market, which is Tyru, or uh, you, know, you would hear from me uh, in a lot of these instances uh, that you have a self-serve tool called Ads Manager, with which you're able to buy ads uh, using biddable media. It, apart from being able to run ads to that Ads Manager, you're, all, you're also able to get audience sizing from that. For example, if you want to know how many people from a specific state uh, are uh, on Snapchat and stuff like that, you can get that audience sizing easily using that uh, Ads Manager as well. So uh, I'm happy to uh, you know connect offline and you know when we send answer a lot of other questions that are there. Uh, which we don't have time to answer today. I'm happy to, you know, send you more links about where can you read more about uh, getting yourself uh, familiar with uh, the self-serve tool called uh, Ads Manager. So that's all the time that we have today uh, as far as questions. But thanks a ton 
for tuning in and uh, over to you nazia thank you mr raman and thank you mr dikach uh, i am sure i'm pronouncing it correctly right uh, for uh, for participating and finishing it so much on time i mean this is very thank you so much for joining this is this was really a very very insightful session uh, camera marketing was something which was also very new to me and i have really learned a lot today uh, by attending this session thanks again for joining us and uh, we hope to have you guys again on our uh, panel sometime soon thanks again thank you nazir thank, thank you so you, much thank you everyone for joining thank, thank you. you bye bye